Welcome back guys and today I'm doing a much requested video and that's how to overclock your graphics card. So today I'm going to be using my GTX 1060 Gaming X from MSI and I'm going to be overclocking this graphics card, taking you guys through a step-by-step -step basis. Though the first two things you'll want to do is download the programs MSI Afterburner and also Unigine Heaven. So I'll put the links in the description below for those two programs, but let's get on with it. So after you've installed both these programs, I want you guys to open up MSI Afterburner. And now in this program, there's gonna be a heap of different options that come up, but don't worry about that. I'm gonna be guiding you guys through each of these settings and giving you my own personal tips and tricks on how to deal with them. So now this mechanical wheel here, I want you guys to left click on that. And I want you to left click start with Windows and also start minimized. And then over on the unlock voltage control, I want you to left click that and then go up to the fan tab here. So left click on that and then left click enable user to find automatic fan control. Because what happens out of the box with uh, graphics cards and fan curves is that they're generally set pretty low and that's for low noise. However, with that low noise and the low fan curve profiles is that what we get is, is that the graphics card will be running hotter. And when the graphics card's running hotter because the fans aren't pushing enough air through, That'll mean lesser overclocks or not as good overclocks as you could have. So we're still going to retain those low noise settings when the graphics card's idling on the desktop by holding down left click and dragging this little box here. And so I like that at 20 degrees, I like it at 20%. We can even go a little bit more and say 30 degrees, we can have that at 30%. And then we hold this left click this down and I want my graphics card as soon as the game's booting up, I want this thing pretty aggressive. So we've got 60% fan speeds at 40 degrees C. And with 80 degrees, we can have that at 50. I mean, sorry, 80%, we can have that at 50 degrees. And then we hold down the left box here and drag that up to 100% at 70 degrees. Now I want you guys to click OK, and then it'll ask you to restart. So you press yes. And now down the bottom right corner, you can left click the little icon here and the MSI afterburner, because we started it minimized. We can then open it up again. And we've got all these options here with the core voltage now being unlocked. So we can slide that all the way to the top here, but do be careful with this setting because some graphics cards, they just can't handle overclocking with extra voltage and extra heat. So what we've got here is an extra 100 millivolts on the graphics card. And so for instance, my R9290X that I recently overclocked in a video, I couldn't actually set this to the maximum because it was getting too hot. And also I had an ASUS RX470 Strix where I had to be very careful with this too, this setting here. So depending on the graphics card, you will have to be careful with it. But for a lot of graphics cards, it should be okay to just set this slider to the maximum. Also just below that, you can set the power limit and the temp limit all the way to the maximum too. And now I'm using a GTX 1060 Gaming X, which is a pretty low powered graphics card in terms of power consumption, but it is a pretty powerful card in terms of performance. So something like this, setting all these maximum sliders here, if you have a GTX 1060 or a GTX 1070 or even 1080, should be absolutely fine. Now we go below that, core clock. This is where things start to get a little bit trickier because we're going to have to find these out for our own graphics card. Now every graphics card, is different. So I want you guys with the core clock to just play around with it. And I'm gonna try uh, straight up 200 megahertz, which is really aggressive on a GTX 1060. So we're gonna lock that in, and then we're gonna open up Heaven Benchmark, MSI Afterburner with the Heaven Benchmark. We're gonna left click run. And now if it crashes, we'll see that our screen will just flicker and all sorts of crazy behavior will happen. Sometimes we'll even have to restart our computer. So don't be afraid. Now, we can see here it's actually crashing. Now I'm recording this on a different computer, so you'll see that my webcam won't actually crash out. So don't worry about that. But if it's on your main computer, you'll get this behavior exactly what's coming up on this screen here so we see here this 200 megahertz on the core it was just too aggressive so we're going to try and get back into the desktop now sometimes you'll have to control alt delete or alt tab um as it's just yeah it's going crazy at the moment so and this is the one thing i wanted to show you guys overclocking can get pretty confusing sometimes so there it is it stopped working so we could see that that overclock was too aggressive so we're going to try and lower that now by a good 50 meg, I'd try, let's try 150 now. 
because that was just crashing straight away. There was no chance that that overclock was going to work. Uh, so we're going to try this next one. And the reason we're using the Heaven benchmark, because it's not the most graphically intensive benchmark, but it's so quick to load up and it's so quick to find an unstable overclock like this. So that's why I'm using this first. And later on, you're going to see I'm going to use another benchmark to test for 100% stability. So this is kind of doing the same behavior as before. So 150 megahertz on the core clock is probably not not possible hopefully we can quit before it um we might have to actually control alt delete again just to uh get out of this program because it's it's crashing again so we're going to close that window off and we're going to try and lower now the overclocks by 50 megahertz again so we're going to try for a hundred and say 107 that should be okay we'll try that and then we'll run it let's lock that in and we'll run this again one more time so overclocking a graphics card i want you guys to see some of the frustrations because there's going to be a lot of different guides out there where maybe they're just like okay lock it in it should be okay but this is where you're going to get uh, a lot of people are going to be overclocking they're going to be like okay my computer's crashing i'm just not going to overclock i'm just going to go back to the default settings but i want to show you guys that crashing is completely normal your graphics card is not going to be broken, don't worry. No, a lot of people think, oh my God, my computer crashed, my, my whole thing's broken, no. All these settings in MSI Afterburner, they're completely safe. You can't really break your graphics card with these settings unless your graphics card, the cooler is not attached to the graphics card properly, which is a different problem altogether. But we can see here, this is actually running okay. So we see here, it's, it's uh, not crashing this time around. So. What this means is that our core clock, if we exit that now, because that's pretty good. I mean, usually I like to run it for a lot longer, but because we're doing a tutorial, we're going to sort of fast track it a little bit. Uh, so, but what this means is that our core clock on this graphics card is somewhere around here. This is somewhere where our graphics card's able to run without crashing. It'll probably be a little bit less. I imagine it'll be a little bit less, maybe somewhere around there, but, um, it could be this as well, that's the thing. So we've done the core clock, now we're going to move over to the memory clock. And now I usually like to just chuck these up at 300 megahertz at a time. So we're gonna try 300 megahertz, lock that in and see if it runs. And you'll get the same behavior. If your graphics card is crashing while you're doing this, it'll be the same as the core clock. The program will crash, weird behavior will come up. But sometimes with the GPU memory overclock, you'll actually have to restart your computer too. So I found on AMD cards as well, especially on AMD cards like my R9 290X when I was overclocking the memory, I had to restart the whole computer quite a few times. So restarting and crashing guys, it's completely normal. So we see the 300 megahertz overclock is running completely normal well, so far, like for one minute. So, which isn't really a long time to be stable, but let's talk more once we find sort of more speeds so we're going to go back into msi afterburner and chuck another 300 megahertz on that overclock and then we're going to left click run and we're going to see if this runs at 600 megahertz so this is pretty aggressive i'm pretty surprised if this works i'll be pretty happy because this is a pretty aggressive overclock on the memory we're essentially getting near uh, gddr5x speeds i believe and this is only gddr5 memory so that's pretty cool. Now uh, we see here, it's actually, this is pretty good. This is running absolutely fine as well. So like I said before, we're gonna kind of fast track. So we're gonna lock in a higher memory overclock here. We're gonna try for 900 megahertz. <laughs> this will not work at all, I don't think. This is really aggressive. If this works, I have won the silicon lottery in terms of memory overclocking, but I just wanna show you guys at crashing and show you guys again, like the core clock, the pro, oh, well, okay. There, we got lines through that. This, even before the benchmark loaded, this wasn't working. So we can see it just flat, nothing. So we're gonna just uh, control alt delete. And yeah, we even got a fatal error there. Okay, so that was not stable at all. So we're gonna drop this and we are going to up the uh, we're going to drop it down to 750, somewhere in between. So we had 600 before, and now we've got 900. So we're going to try for 750. And we're going to see if we get any problems. So memory overclocks, you don't have to be too precise here. 
Uh, the core clock is always more important than the memory clock. Keep that in mind. That's, whoa, okay, so we, as soon as we loaded up the benchmark, we had some problems here. This, you can see there, the art, that's called artifacting. So essentially this memory overclock is not stable. So that's the second problem you're gonna have. The first problem is crashing. If your graphics card crashes like it was before, then it's way off being stable. If it starts artifacting like it just did then, which is where all these weird things come up that shouldn't be there, uh, you can then know that you're probably pretty close to being stable. So now that we were at 750, we can try maybe 650 and see if we have any problems with this overclock. So uh, this is also going to be the overclock that I will be using for my upcoming showdown between the 1060 and the RX 580. So this will be interesting to see how high this graphics card goes. So we can see here it's running okay, so far so good, but I usually like to give this a good 10 to 30 minutes at least in this benchmark before I come back for you guys and say if it's relatively stable or not. So we're gonna let this run for a good chunk of time and then I'm gonna come back and see how it went. So now we've been running the Heaven benchmark for a good 30 minutes and also decided to run the inbuilt benchmark itself, which gives you a score. And we see here overclocked, we're scoring over 3,800 points. And non-overclocked, out of the box settings are getting around 3,500. So we're gaining a good chunk of performance near a 10% increase in this benchmark alone. However, Unigine Heaven is only one benchmark and it's not the most GPU intense benchmark. So now we're gonna move over to Firestrike and test that in that benchmark as that's really GPU intensive. And then we're gonna see if this overclock passes. If it doesn't, then we're gonna have to drop our overclocks by a little bit more and then we should be stable in most games. Though keep in mind that this benchmark here, the Unigine Heaven, I use this because as I said up before, it just loads up so quickly and it finds crashes really quickly. So we can sort of home in on our levels really quickly with this program and then use Firestrike for the finishing touches. So let's get over to that benchmark. So this is Firestrike, it's a free program, though you will get a demo if you haven't purchased the license, which is fine, you can just download that. I'll put the link in the description below for you guys. So download this, install this, and then you can click on run. Now I'm expecting this to crash because every time I've found like a relatively stable overclock in heaven, it's actually crashed in Firestrike. So Hopefully this works. As we can see here, this benchmark, it just takes a long time to load up, which is generally why I don't use it to test for stable overclocks. That good 20 seconds you're just wasting is time you've got to waste over and over again. So, and I expect it to crash, like pretty much either in the second run or even in the combined score. So we see here that it's getting through the benchmark okay, but I'm just like sitting here and waiting for it Okay, there, there we go. It actually crashed on me right now. So we see there that this is actually good for you guys to see that even though it may appear stable in some games and some benchmarks, it's actually not 100% stable. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop that by a good 50 megahertz on the memory. And we're going to drop the core clock by a good 25 megahertz. So hopefully this passes the benchmark. So let's load that up and let's stress test this and see if it works. Okay, so we just completed our benchmark there with the lower settings that we had on there. So this is pretty much close to being stable. Now we want to run this benchmark a few times, play a few games, but we may have to lower this just by a little bit more or same with the memory clocks as well. We may have to lower these just by a little bit more. So we see that we can lock that in and we can go to left click on the save there and we can save that to any number of these profiles. So we left click on three and then also you can left click on startup. So essentially every time we boot the computer now, this program will load up minimized and it'll lock in our overclocks automatically. So now we're getting free performance all the time, all day, every day. So this is really awesome. It's so awesome in fact, that you may now have to wear PC glasses while you are playing video games. 
so we finished the fire strike benchmark and we've got a graphic score of over 15,000. if we compare that to the original score we can see that we've gained a good chunk of performance and not only this benchmark but also the heaven benchmark and what this means is when you're playing video games you're going to get more fps and it's for doing absolutely nothing this is free performance in your graphics card waiting to be utilized and hopefully this tutorial has helped you guys get that extra performance out of your Gravis card. And if you appreciate content like this, and this was a request from you guys too, so if you appreciate content like this, then you can head over to TechCity on patreon.com and for as little as a dollar a month, you can help support the channel and keep the content flowing. Anyway guys, let's move over now to a conclusion. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and if you did then be sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments about today's video then be sure to drop a comment in the comments section below and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. And also don't forget that overclocking isn't too scary, there's going to be no problems if you do everything right. If you follow this tutorial and don't be afraid of crashing, if your computer crashes it doesn't mean that everything has hit a brick wall, don't worry about that. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.